بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to Masailun Nisa. I am your host, Saleha, and today we have with us a very special guest to discuss the topic of how to go about looking for a spouse. Now, before we begin, let me introduce our guest to you. Our guest today is Muftiya Nasima Um Hamza. Um, let me tell you a little bit about her. She has a degree from Queen Mary College. Queen Mary University, I apologize, in pharmaceutical chemistry. She is also a qualified teacher. After studying in Egypt and attaining Ijazat and Islamic scholarship, that's the Alamiya, under the tutelage of Sheikh Akram Nadwi, she established the Quran Institute with her husband. Currently, she is an instructor and course coordinator for the Quran Institute, deputy head teacher at the Quran Academy, which she also co founded with her husband and a pastoral care worker at Al Madad Outreach. Her and her husband have also launched a women's center dedicated to serving Muslim women where she teaches the Islamic sciences. She's completed her studies in Ifta at Darul Ilm, Birmingham, to qualify as a muftiya. She is also a proud mother of four. Welcome to our show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Muftiya. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah for having me on the show. No, barakallah freekum. Um, we're so pleased to have you here. It's the first time we've had a Muftiya on the show, so mm -hmm. I'm sure our viewers are excited to hear from you. Um, and as I said, our topic today is about how to go about finding a spouse. So in the weeks prior to this, we've been discussing about marriage, how to prepare for marriage, and then of course, that leads you on to how to go about finding a spouse. And as we know, um, searching for a spouse today has its own challenges. Um, our main focus for this topic will be here in the UK, but of course we can touch on um, how it, it's done throughout the world. Um, but I would like to start off with saying that um, just to open up the conversation, that we know that there are several ways that we can search for a Muslim spouse. So, um, you know, a marriage partner in this modern world, um, most of them tend to be remote methods. So, for example, we can find somebody through a Muslim marriage site um, or even apps. We have bureaus, we have WhatsApp groups. Um, other methods are Muslim networking and marriage events, which are quite big at the moment also. We'll talk about that. Um, through parents or f family, you know, the traditional methods through our mosques, through our imams, um, through social media even now. So that's a new phenomenon mm -hmm. with us. Um, and of course, everyday life. So um, to begin the topic, my first question um, to you will be, and of course we'll discuss this, how can one search for a spouse today, um, given all the challenges of modern day? And what is it that we who should we consult first um, and how do we go about it with what we have available to us. Yeah. So, you, so Jazakta Khairan, you've mentioned mm. some of the sort of places that we go to for mm. marriage. I think some of them are, I would say, more ideal and there's some of them that are less ideal. So even from the, the best way to do it is, as you mentioned, like through friends, family, mm. um, you know, even like the mosques and things like that, that you can. So I'd say like, first and foremost, try to go through family, like mm -hmm. family, relatives, even friends that you know, because mm -hmm. they would have like their own sort of connections. And um, they know you the best at the end of the day, your family members, your, your parents, your siblings, even like cousins and things like that. And mm -hmm. um, they actually know you the best. So they, I would say, are better suited to know who would be compatible for you as for a spouse. You, yes. Whereas when you look at things like, um, like you know like internet mm. or like apps or these sort of like even when you go you know you mentioned about the sort of you know where they make those sort of meetings for connecting and That's things like right, that yes. um, it's very sort of you know 
just like too short if you know and you don't know the person and they don't know you and even your family don't so there's no mm. sort of recommendation there you're so just relying on that meeting with the person that's or right that so the connection that you have yeah so as you said like we have so many mediums and there's of course pros and cons for each of them but um I guess what you're really saying is that from Islam we know that this is how it was done traditionally through yeah. relations, through knowing people, you know, uh, uh, people would make recommendations. Even we've seen um, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how the Sahaba would come to him um, and he would pair up people and say, you know, so and so um, might be suitable for you or he would suggest people to each other yeah. and, and, and that was I guess through him knowing who the people are and it didn't it wasn't always a success so um similarly we'll find that our family as you said will know us better uh, the people in our communities aunties um mm. you know and and even whatsapp groups i don't know if you come across um this method of whatsapp groups so um yeah. I, i'm actually part of a whatsapp group and um of course not for myself i'm married <laughs> i'm the one settled and what i have noticed is it's it's a very good system going so the parents um you know even the um candidates themselves will post a cv on the whatsapp group and if you feel it's the right person for you, you can contact them and then, um, you know, subsequently see them, um, in, you know, in a public space or in your home with a chaperone. So obviously yeah. for the sisters, they'll have like their mother or their brother with them. Um, and obviously with the, um, uh, the young brothers, they will have a family member too. Mm. So that's one method. And as you say, it's possibly the safest methods. But we do need to explore other methods as well. And as I said, we're living in the modern day and age. And I, I guess if we look at the generation we have now, we have to um, accommodate their needs. And what you'll find is a lot of uh, professional people, for example, um, you know, we have a lot of young men and women who have careers and who might say they don't have the time. Yeah. Um, so I guess for them, you know, if they had to resort to the Muslim networking or marriage events, um, if I may ask you this question, how would you advise them to keep it halal? Yeah. Um, so there's a few things. I think there's probably like three or four points that I would mm. want to touch upon in terms of that. Um, just to add um, to what you said about the searching, I think one of the things we forget is um, we can still keep it halal mm. and um, so for example, find someone through um, work or like, you know, education. Yeah. Um, even sometimes if you're part of like some sort of community, if you go to like Islamic circles, if you attend a halaqa. Halakas, um, yeah. mm. So we sort of like discount these ways mm. um, because we think, OK, if you meet someone through work or college or university, what have you, that it naturally means you've dated them or you've mm. got to know them and it's got into a sort of like a haram relationship. But that's not necessarily the case because yeah. as long as you follow the the rules that are from Islam in terms of how to get to know a person for mm. marriage, then it's fine. So, for example, if you met someone at work, um, you might have seen them over a long period of time, which means that you've got to know their character as well. So which you know is actually, of them. Yeah, yeah. or college, mm. you might have seen them around. You might see a brother and you see that he, he frequents the, the prayer room. He's yeah. always there at the prayer time and he, you know, joins the congregation. He's always at the Jummah prayer, mm. for example. And that's already starting to give you like a sort of idea and about the person. So the I'll say like. these are good ways as well because mm. you sort of get to um, see the person over a period of time and then mm. get to make a sort of judgment about them as well. Um, so these are some things we shouldn't discount as long as and we're not getting into uh, a, like you know a point where we're free mixing with them. Yeah, so, so you're within the boundaries. Yeah, exactly. You're keeping within the boundaries, and I'm really glad you touched up on that point because sometimes what you will find is that young people, um, you know, they will say that the parents don't approve of it. But I guess maybe what we're trying to say to parents is that we've got to have an open mind now uh, because our children are growing up in this country um, and you know we have the challenges of the western culture so we need to be open-minded as well and think that you know your child may meet somebody at work they may meet somebody at university and you know what let them suggest somebody and you can um, go along with them and check them out you know yeah. if it, to see um, if this relationship is compatible um, and as you say you know, for that we need to keep an open mind and we need to also 
keep an open mind in our communities because we tend to judge people very quickly and say, oh, so-and-so met someone at college. You know, do you think it's, you know, how, how do you think that yeah. come about? Do you think she knew him or he knew her? Um, and, you know, so we, we find these sort of conversations happening in community. Um, so what, if you had to say something to um, give advice to the community, what would that be? Um, so I think there's one thing is the individual themselves, one thing is like the, the, the parents and family that's involved. So I'd say um, if your own child or, you know, like your sort of like family member approaches you and says, there's mm. this person that I'm interested in, I met them at work or college, or I've even met them through like a social media app or what have you yeah. or networking. And um, parents need to have an open mind. It, they shouldn't jump to the conclusion that it means that they've been in a sort of like haram relationship or mm -hmm. boyfriend girlfriend relationship, and that's why they're coming to them. Actually, maybe it's that the, the, your child has actually, um, you know, enough trust in yeah. you as parents that you know you trust their judgment and that you know you you haven't gone into that relationship, mm. and that's why you've come to them because and you want to keep they're it seeking halal. your guidance. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and you mm. don't want to fall into. Haram. That's why you're mm. approaching your parents and saying, look, mum, dad, um, you know, there's this person that is in my college or work or whatever, or, or you know, f through friends and family or whatever it is that I've met. And I'm interested in marrying them. And I want you to be the ones that look into them and take it to the next stage. Yeah. And actually, that's a good thing. Parents should be happy that they, their children feel that they can come to them they and approach them. They feel them. comfortable. Yeah, so um, I think that's really important. In terms of like for the individual themselves, like I think some of the points mm. that are important are in terms of not you know like getting emotionally involved yes. so like sometimes what happens is if somebody meets a person um for marriage in whichever sort Don't of medium form that is, emotional attachment yeah, too I, soon i think yeah. that mm. for sisters especially sometimes when they're looking into somebody mm. they can get emotionally a, a, attached yeah. to the person mm. this process of looking for someone is more like a sort of interview stage yeah. yeah so it's not actually sometimes people try and say like you know you see the the words used nowadays like halal dating mm. and things like that but really from the islamic perspective it's not dating it's no. more like a interview process to see if you're compatible so i, guess I think it's really important courting might be more appropriate yeah, courting, when I you're think, yeah. when you're assessing somebody is the right one for you know, right person for you, yeah. um, and it's known that it's for marriage. I think as now well. people don't like that word, but okay. um, it is probably a better, more suitable well, I'm of word. An older generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah something that the older generation mm. maybe used. Mm. Um, but courting is probably a better way to look at it because yeah. you're sort of not going I'm over not sure certain I like boundaries. The confusion with dating because yeah. it creates lots of exactly, images. Exactly, that's the thing. Yeah. Dating mm. um, has a lot more. It's about it's a, um, there's an emotional connection there, yeah. um, mm. things like that. Which obviously, if you're looking into someone for marriage, yeah. yes, you know, you want to see if you're compatible but it doesn't mean that you're going to start getting emotionally involved with that person because Allahu alam, you might look into them and it might not work out yes. whereas if you've got into a sort of like emotional relationship with the person it's going to be more difficult to detach from more things that work out that's right. so I think this is really important another thing I, I think is really important to touch upon is not to be in khalwa with the person so the mm. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us um, that when a man and woman are together alone then the third is shaitan um, so this means that when you know, this is something that can end up happening when you're looking yeah. into it as somebody that you say, um, let's go meet in a private place. Um, you know, so this is what we need yeah, to avoid. So this is something yeah. that we have mm. to avoid. Yes, it's allowed for you to go and speak to the potential mm. spouse. It's allowed for you to find out about them. So get I to guess know them. Um, what we're really saying is that if, if you have to meet somebody and you don't have a chaperone, mm. then just um, ensure that it's a public space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as you say, the doors are open, so you're not in khalwa, you're not in a private space. Yeah. Anybody can walk in at any time, anybody can walk out, you know, yeah. it's people are coming and going. Yeah. Ideally, mm. we do want to have um, a chaperone involved because yeah. it, it does protect, um, protect us from a lot of fitna. Of course, what could happen yeah. is Because you're in sort of like a, a situation where, like we said, like emotions and things like that can mm. get involved and shaitan loves to do waswas, isn't of it? Course, yes, so yeah. shaitan yeah. can easily put ideas in your head, mm. whereas when you have like a, a, a mahram or even a, a, like a third person, even if yeah. that's like a selected family member, it could be a friend or a relative or what have you, it sort of protects you from that. Yeah. Um, so I'd say ideally, the ideal thing is for us to have somebody involved always in that, have, wherever it's a or what have you. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. And worst comes to worst, like I know for some sisters, they might not have that. Then mm. in that situation, try and, you know, be wise in the, the way that you meet the person. So 
like yes. definitely in a public setting, not somewhere that's very quiet and isolated, you know, like a busy place um, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of people around. Um, th that would be permitted, but not the ideal, I would and say. And the guardian, as you yeah. say, is always there for um, your protection. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we know, though we can, as mature adults, we can police our own actions, we sometimes give in to our desires, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Temptations and desires. Yeah. And so I guess we, nobody knows us better than ourselves. So if we doubt that we're not going to be able to respect those boundaries, maybe that's you know, a sign that we should get somebody yeah. involved. Um, but naturally, we also find another challenge is we're having um, people, you know, who are of much older age now. So, you know, you get brothers and sisters in their um, late 20s, mm -hmm. 30s, early 30s, late 30s even. Um, you know, we have this new um, culture, if you like, because they, our young, youngsters have focused so much on their career, their studies, um, and I guess it's not intentional necessarily because you think, oh, I'm just going to do this and then I'll think about marriage. Yeah. And before you know it, you're on to the next thing. And then you think, I'm just going to do this, achieve this um, in my life and then I'll think about marriage. And before you know it, you know, you reach 30 or 40 years old and suddenly you've realized you've left it a bit too late. Mm -hmm. And so that has its own challenges. Um, so what I'm really trying to say is I guess for those brothers and sisters who know um, you know, who are limited for choice in the sense that they don't have family around them, perhaps. Yeah. They're not with family. Maybe they, they can um, seek marriage events and, you know, um, meetups. Yeah. Uh, because they, we know they're seriously seeking, but of course, if they have family and friends who can yeah, accompany them. I think what them. you're saying is that they might have, like, exhausted all avenues yes, that's already. Right, and yes. they, they're sort of having to resort to um, situations where there's, like, the, they've sort of expanded their yeah. horizon, basically. So and most people you, feel this yeah. way, unfortunately. Yeah, I, uh, that, yeah. that is um, going to happen. If you've been looking mm. for a long time, then naturally, you, you know, if you, your friends, family, everyone, you've already been through the sort of, you know, connections that mm. they can make. So then definitely go to marriage apps or like, you know, the networking um, sort of meetings and things like that. But just be very, very careful in terms of, um, you know, have that that extra person, extra that third person, person yeah. um, have that chaperone there with you mm -hmm. and really consider what they have to say. Sometimes what happens is, especially when you meet someone and you start, um, you know, like having more interactions with them, mm. then your, you know, like your rational brain starts shutting yeah. down and emotions start getting more involved. When you have that chaperone, they can look into the person for you and see it from like a third person view. Whereas mm. when you're involved in it, it's more difficult. So yeah. this is where the, the mahrams or the chaperones, they get involved and they can look into the person for you and say, okay, I've spent some time with this mm. brother that you're interested in and this is sort of my, you know, like conclusion on this person. Yes. This is how they are or mm. this is how they've been behaving. I've even, they can go and do research for you. I think this is really something that's important. Mm. And sometimes when you sort of get involved in the person and it's more emotional you you don't really you think oh they're a lovely person i really like them and we really connect and you forget okay let me look into them in terms of like what's their dean like what's yes. their character like how are they with the women folk in their family how are they you know with like other people how do mm. they behave with other people and this is where like your um, chaperones they can go and do the research for you they can go and find out like you know what mosque they pray in mm -hmm. um you know who do they hang around with what do they do in their spare time so and and that is from the sunnah you must seek a you know a, get a background check yeah, on the person references. because yeah. you know this is a matter of life really isn't yeah, it exactly. you have to spend your entire life with this person exactly so you yeah. want to do like sort of all mm -hmm. the research you can and yeah. make sure you're making the best informed decision and mm -hmm. this is where like your chaperone can be involved and you know ch check all the references find yeah. out like who they are do a little bit of digging um, this is really important for me to to do that and I've seen a lot of like marriages break apart because of the fact that the sister she's got married to mm. to a brother she has you know she she she's she's done some sort of like research into Check, the person yeah. maybe got one or two references but then not really gone too much into too much, depth yes. like there's been some good things about the brother from like say family members mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but they haven't really gone well, like, sort of you, wider as you say you become emotionally attached so you choose to ignore the facts don't yeah, you uh, so that can happen as well i mean we're only human beings at the end of the day but also if you reverse it there's another problem we face is that um you've you've actually done your research you feel like um and you know you go ahead with the marriage and you may still find that you're incompatible and 
and I, I guess w with situations like that you just have to accept that that's the qadr of Allah that yeah. you know it was meant to be Definitely. sometimes you will find that you might get um, you may feel that two people are perfect for each other in every way and still things don't work out yeah. um, and you know people often wonder you know subhanallah didn't imagine this couple would ever fall apart or sometimes you may even find the most unlikely couple you know come together mm -hmm. and you know mashallah they sort of survive their marriage and you think how did they do it yeah this uh, is where tawakkul comes yes. in isn't it mm. you tawakkul is when you've done all your sort of research you've yeah. done everything you've done everything within your control and then you say that i have trust in allah like whatever is meant to be for me now and it's going to be yeah, yeah. so mm. this is where first but the thing is with tawakkul you have to do the 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 research tie your camel you have to first, tie your yes. camel as you say yeah yes, you have absolutely. to do that first mm. you have to do as much as you can be sure that i've done the best i can yes. i've done all the research i've looked for all the references i've tried to find out as much about this person that i can then i've mm. gone into the marriage and then whatever happens it is qadr of allah it like is, you said it this is, is yes. uh, meant to be this is part of your test as well that maybe if the mm -hmm. relationship doesn't work out that this yes. is a test at the end of the day for but for you, you do actively need to seek as well i think there comes a point in life where you feel where if the person feels, okay, I've left it late, or, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm in my 30s and I need to think seriously. For uh, women, of course, there's the issue of fertility because, yeah. you know, you're not going to, eat. it depends, it varies from woman to woman. But we know the early years are better for a woman, in, mm. you know, in, in, um, in terms of childbearing. So there's that aspect to think about. And, in, um, and for our brothers, it may be, you know, they may wait later you know marry later on in their life it won't affect them so much and but, but and, and also we find that some are affected yeah. so there's that kind of issue but there's also another challenge which is um you could call it culture because what happens is some of our uh, muslim brothers and sisters are from very cultural backgrounds even though we've grown up here um, in the uk so they might be looking for a housewife Mm. Um, and what you'll find is now in this modern day and age, we have a lot of young women who are educated and professional. And I'm not saying that they should prioritize their profession over their home life, but some women may choose to work, they may choose to study, as well as uh, you know, be a wife and a mother. Mm. So um, what would your advice be on handling something like that? Yeah. Um, it's quite a deep um, question. Hopefully, mm. we can get, cover some ground. Explore it a bit, at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, um, so, mm. like, obviously, for us as Muslims, for anything that we do, we have to mm. go back to our basis, isn't it? Which yes. is the religion. Um, so, our deen sort of gives us guidelines in terms of what are the roles of men and women in mm. life. So, for the woman, her her sort of like role, you could say, is as a as a wife, as a mother, and yes. as a mother. So that's a her primary role, primary role yes. in mm. in 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 like sort of society and mm. in life mm. generally. Whereas for the man, his sort of primary role is as the breadwinner. Yeah, yeah he's the one the that provider, earns the yeah. inca income and he protects the family and mm. provides for them. So this is sort of our sort of primary role. So this mm. is, means that also this is where our reward lies so yes. for a woman as a wife and a mother um, she has a great reward in that mm -hmm. yeah so we should be working towards that this should be part of our aims and objectives yes. but naturally you know if you've you know you've sought an education if you've um, got you know like some sort of career that you've been seeking mm -hmm. and you're you're fulfilling your primary roles in life then there's nothing wrong with going and like you know having a job or what have you as yeah. long as you know if you are a mother and a wife that you you make that your priority so you know not all women are isn't it not no, all, all women right. get married yeah. or even yeah. sometimes women get married and they don't have children so in that case maybe what they can commit to in terms of like their career um what they can c commit to in terms of work it, it's going to be different isn't it mm. so i think we have to look at things um from like what is the foundation what is the basis which is that the the, the woman is generally um, her primary role is as a mother and, the, uh, and as yeah. a wife and for the man his primary role as is as a as a breadwinner for yes. like coming in bringing the income into the family mm -hmm. and it's actually beautiful because from our religion um you know it comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. he's our creator he knows us and best. so that's our reference point yeah, really exactly and it, yeah. that mm. means that the roles that he gives us actually work best yeah so if 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 the wife it's is the, harmony, the mother it, yeah she's harmony. taking care yeah, of the household yeah. whereas mm. the man he's dealing with everything outside that outside mm. of the household it comes together and it makes these two complementary roles that work hand in hand together hand in, of and this is really the ideal but unfortunately 
um, living here in the West, it doesn't always work because no. just by how we how we live in, like look at it, we're, we're going through like a sort of economic crisis at the moment. You know, the cost of living is mm -hmm. is just going up and up and up, which means that as a Muslim woman, you might have to go and work. You might actually even yes. have to sort of contribute to your family. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if, if a sister does that, then she will be getting reward for that as well, for providing for her family, for mm -hmm. working and, you know, bringing income in and making sure that the family life is stable. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, marriage and family life, the, the main objective is to have like, you know, tranquility, to have Sakina, yeah. isn't it? So as long as course, both couples yeah. are working towards the Sakina, then if the wife, you know, ca can work and needs mm. to work, there's nothing wrong with that, inshallah. And actually, talking about Sakina, you've just reminded me of the um, verse in the Quran where Allah Zawajal says in chapter 30, verse 21, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, he says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that is, and amongst his signs that he created um, spouses from amongst yourselves for you to live with them in tranquility. So, you know, تَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So it's yeah. from Sakina, isn't exactly. it really? Yeah. Um, and so it's for us to find comfort and um, tranquility. And, and so... With this, actually, th this is going to nicely lead us into break time, and hopefully, we can come back and um, um, pick up from this point. Yeah, no. So, um, thank you for joining us, and we're going to take a short break and see you straight after break. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. And now, uh, Mufti Anasima, my second question to you, which will take us nicely into the second part of this discussion. So, we talked about the challenges. Why is it proving such a challenge to find a spouse? Why are we finding that brothers and sisters are complaining that it's difficult, um, at, not just difficult, that it's impossible to find a spouse in this day and age? There are like there's so many reasons we can go into. I hopefully we can um, talk about a few, inshallah. Mm, definitely. Think, one of them I think is really important to address uh, is the impact of parents on the on the children. children yeah. uh, I've seen many cases where the children, you know, they found someone that they feel is compatible, suitable, mm -hmm. and they want to get married. But then the parents will come and put a barrier up. So sometimes it could be they say you're too young. Yes. Like, say, if, for example, you know, it's better for us to get married young anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, parents would say, for example, you know, you need to finish your degree. Your studies, you need to, yes. yeah, you need to have a certain amount of money. Yeah. You need to buy a house. You need to be established. So there's expectations. Yeah. Isn't so there? parents put yeah. like sort of a big expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the past maybe it was more on sons, but even now on daughters. Like my daughter can't well, get married yeah. until she's finished her degree, uh, until she's, uh, you know, been working for a few mm. years. Then she can consider marriage. But before that. Yeah. Yes. They can't. Another thing is from parents as well. They have this uh, in our Bengali culture. There's mm. this thing of you know, like the older children have to get married first. So there has to be a sort of age so order. There's an order. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it could be even that one child is mm. 25, 30, and they're ready to get married. They're yes. established and everything. But then the parents come and say, no, your they older brother or your older sister's not married. Yes. Yet, you can't get married. Um, so this can actually create fitna for that person now mm. because they're ready to get married. They might have even found someone to marry, but parents are getting in the way and say, no, you're, you're not going to get so, married right now. And understandably, I think what parents feel is there's a stigma, isn't there, in our community, um, you know, in the Bangladesh mm. community, we feel that if you leave the older son or daughter and marry off the younger son or daughter, yeah. that, you know, there's something wrong with them. Yeah. Or, or it's just not part of our ways. But I'm pleased to say, Alhamdulillah, I think, um, you know, in my, amongst my friends and families, I'm seeing it more and more now that the younger ones when they are ready, they are being encouraged to, yeah. um, you know, go ahead and do yeah, that. Yeah, there um, are. I've seen both. So yeah. I've seen like 
um, some parents still being held they, back. They yeah. will still be like, no way, this is not from our culture, <laughs> and we're not going to allow it. Yeah, and then yeah. there's some parents like, alhamdulillah, with some convincing, yeah, they yeah. they will come around. But then you you also have some parents that they're more open to oh, it course, as well, yeah. alhamdulillah. Um, so there is a sort of like there is some change, but mm-hmm. then I think there are still some parents that are still very like sort of inclined to what the culture says, and they're not yes. willing to change their mind on it and unfortunately what can happen is that the children are falling into sins and yes. they're not actually seeing that because they're looking at it from sort of face value you know mashallah my child's praying whatever mm. they're doing well but then in the background they could be in a haram relationship because yes. they wanted to marry someone and they were like if my parents are not going to allow me to this yes. is what's going to happen do you see so it so can actually create so much fitna that, that's result. actually quite a serious point because we're not just saying um you know that you're you, th- that they're going to feel deprived but they're actually falling into sin yeah um so naturally if your children are falling into sin because of something you know you're doing because you're preventing them then you're going to share in that sin exactly. uh, in effect so really i guess as parents we have to be as open minded as possible and really look at what this uh, what our deen says and we know that from the deen um there's no restriction on age um when I say age, meaning that, you know, once you're baligh, we should encourage young people to get yeah. married if it's there and they feel they have to satisfy those needs because we, you know, as human beings, you have um, physical needs and desires that they develop when, once you mature. Yeah. So to channel them in a halal way is probably more, um, should be our priority rather than preventing them because they'll find a way, they'll yeah. find a back door. Um, and not only that, um, in teach them from very young age that, okay, we're going to be open about relationships, you know, marriage is going to come um, and we're not going to set any boundaries for you. Marriage can come at any point. If you want to grow together, you know, you can take on a wife, you can both study together and that's happening now as well yeah. um, mm-hmm. on a broad scale. Um, even I think one thing I just wanted to touch on, yes, before, sure. um, sorry, because you mentioned about yeah. like, um, you know, we're talking about this topic of parents being a barrier. Mm. Uh, and uh, another thing that you see is sometimes um, parents weren't allowed to, their children to get married because it's not within the same culture. culture like, for example, yeah. you know, it, uh, you, you know, mean cross cultural Yeah, marriages. so we're from the Bangladeshi yeah. mm. community. Mm. But parents would be like, you know, you can't marry an Arab or you can't yeah. marry somebody, you know, that's even or from, from India or what have you, you saw India yeah. or Pakistan. Mm. But this is not from Islam. You no, see, we're no. all Muslim, we all have the same belief. Um, and we're all brothers and sisters in Islam. So I think this is something that if your child does want to get married outside of the culture, yes. um, there's nothing wrong with it. And parents sh- should be open to it. Yeah. Maybe it, they ha- they haven't been brought up with that. So for our older generation, like my parents' generation, mm-hmm. they haven't been brought up with, you know, children sort of marrying, you know, into, into different cultures. Um, so it can be hard cultural, for them to yeah. accept. Mm-hmm. But if we're looking at it from like yes, perspective, Islamic perspective, it's completely allowed, it's halal. It's a culture and, shock, isn't yeah. it? But as you say, Mufti uh, Nassim, um, that it's... It's from our deen, you know, we need to look back at our deen. So a culture is there for us to, um, you know, identify with where we're from, what language we speak, um, you know, our way of life, traditional way of life. But ultimately, our reference point is um, Quran and Sunnah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we need to look back to, yeah. isn't it? How was it done? How did our Prophet wasalam, advise us to go yeah. about these things? And I guess that's what we're not paying attention to. Yeah. Exactly, and, and um, there's a beauty in it because yeah. uh, you know in the Quran Allah says that mm-hmm. He made us in tribes and nations yes. to know each other. Yes. So yes. there's one thing that uh, maybe in our culture we so think that you may recognize yeah exactly one another. and know each other, yeah. recognize mm-hmm. each other. Um, mm-hmm. In our culture, maybe we feel like there's more compatibility because there's no culture clash. Yeah. But there's also a beauty in getting to know different cultures and mm-hmm. you know living together as well as yeah. as Muslims. So it can be a very beautiful thing when cultures come together as well. Yes, I think it is a beautiful thing. Um, And just something else um, I want to touch on, which you said earlier, about being a mother and a wife. Um, I personally don't mind sharing that my education, most of my education that I sought, Islamic education, I sought after becoming a wife and a mother. So this is just to prove to our sisters that it's not something that has to be done in order for you to get married. You can actually get married. Uh, but as you say, seek a spouse who understands the value of education, Islamic education, and wants that for himself, he wants it for you, but for his family as well. Because only someone who values Islam and the education and understands that it's an obligation upon you to seek that education. Because if you think about it, 
the um, you know marriage is a big responsibility and the mother also has a very um, big responsibility in that she's going to be the first school for her child you know the early years are uh, the child spends most of the time with the mother and what we know about children is that children do not do as they're told children will do as they see so how whatever they see their mother or father doing they will pick up those habits they will pick up those uh, the language you know the um the nuances you will find that children you will find are a reflection of who we are our mm -hmm. teachings you know tarbiya comes from the parents yeah. and i think we tend to overlook that the mother uh, if we look at women for example we're 50% of the um, you know, population. entire population, yeah. bringing up 100% of the population. So can you see the weight of responsibility on the shoulder of women? Um, I know it's been done jointly now, and a lot of things are being done jointly now. As we spoke about earlier, you know, um, nowadays we have men and women working, so we find the roles are shared. Um, but as you said, that what's important is that you understand your role, that the primary role is for the husband as a protector, as a provider. Yeah. And as a wife, what you're doing is you're supporting his role. So the fact that you're earning um, and you need two salaries to be able to afford a house, for example, yeah. um, you know, like with living costs going high, I think I don't think families will be able to survive without both couples working now, um, yeah. you know. So we have different challenges, but what we need to understand, I guess, is that you always go back to your reference point that, you know, what is your role? So when you run into a dispute, a disagreement between husband and wife even, mm -hmm. because your reference point is one, you can settle that quite easily um, and, you know, know your place. Um, so can you shed some light on that? How, um, you know, the challenges that couples do face, for example, um, um, you know, if their uh, working life clashes their yeah. responsibilities clash, who's going to look after the children if, for example, both husband and wife are working? Yeah. Um, so as, as we've been discussing mm -hmm. so far that as with Islam as our reference point, the, the primary role of the father, the, the man is as the, the breadwinner of the mm -hmm. family and the primary role for the mother is as the I'm uh, sorry, the woman is as the mother and as the wife. So okay. these are sort of like the, the basis and what we go, go, go back to. Mm -hmm. And if we look at it even from like the hikmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, the woman, she's the one who carries the child, isn't it? She's yes. pregnant, she carries the child for mm -hmm. nine months. And then up to another two years, she breastfeeds the Breast, child yes. as well, isn't it? Fostering and child, it yeah. would be mm -hmm. impossible if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the, you know, the burden of earning and bringing the, you know, the income into the family well. on the yeah. mother. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's actually from Allah's wisdom that he created man and woman mm. in certain ways and then he gave them certain roles as well whereas Absolutely, when we look at in this yeah. society mm. where there's um, you know equality is pushed on both um, the, the man and the woman mm. um, it's actually impossible if you think about it for, for yes. a woman when she's carrying the child and you know she she's feeding the child to be able to do both we it are puts different a real, yeah. it puts a real mm. burden on her mm. uh, and it's much more natural for her to be able to just stay at home look after the children um, you know, when they grow up, maybe to, yeah. to, to be able to, you know, then seek a career. For example, um, you know, for myself as well, I got married quite young, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. I actually got married when I was in university. So I got to, you know, alhamdulillah, my husband, he supported me through my studies, my degree and everything so, like that in terms yeah. of my secular education. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, I had actually had children after that. Um, but you can, to some extent, do both. Um, but then when it comes to it, you have to think, okay, what's my primary role? So yes. even if I was see, at university... Um, if I could interrupt yeah. you on a moment, I think that's so beautiful that, you know, um, you come together in marriage and then that you journey together through education, you yeah. know, as husband and wife, as companions. And isn't that what we, when we looked at the ayah in the Quran talking about um, finding companionship and tranquility within each other, so yeah. if you look at it, that's what the beauty of marriage is, that you find that within each other, that support. And that's why you're able to flourish, aren't you? You're yeah. able to achieve all yeah, those things that you that. do as, uh, you know, as a man or a woman, yeah. um, as you say. And then you're able to think about a family and you're both in a good place, um, you know, um, mentally as well as financially, because you've taken those steps. Yeah. And I, th mm. I think um, 
getting married younger is actually the ideal because we, we were talking as well about you know like the barriers that come into you know when you're looking to get married and yeah. we see like the even statistically there's a, the statistics are showing that sort of men and women are mm -hmm. getting married older maybe women more so even than men That's uh, right. and yeah. when you're young um, there's a sort of like you know you have more sort of flexibility in terms of you know like um, what you're willing to compromise on and things like that. And as I, you get older, you yeah. sort of become more stuck in your ways. Like It's you interesting <laughs> you say that. You actually yeah. hit the nail on the head. I was once speaking to a very uh, close and dear friend and what she mentioned was, she said exactly the same thing. Um, you know, I said, look, why do you feel it's so challenging? And she said, no, you know what, Salah? She said, you don't understand. She said, when you're younger, you're more versatile. You're just ready to accept people more easily, you know, to compromise. Yeah. Um, and you don't mind change. Yeah. But when you, as you said, you go over a certain age and you kind of get set in your ways. You want things to be that way. You don't want to make changes. You don't want to adopt. Exactly. You know, even if you look at, the ch look at a child, mm. look how like sort of moldable and malleable yes. they are, isn't it? If you, if you bring them up with, like, with good, with Islam, mm. then they will absorb that. And if you brought them up with like non-Islam, you see mm. as well that they absorb that, isn't it? So this is how, as, as you get older and older and older, that's all yes. starts going away. So if you get married like in your early 20s, maybe even late teens, mm. you are more more sort of like adaptable and more changeable mm. more willing to sort of you know like fit into with each other like sort yeah, of mold it's, into it's each like other and accept each pieces, other changing exactly. puzzle, it's like yeah. a jigsaw puzzle yeah whereas yeah. when you get older you're more stuck in your ways yeah. um, and that's going to happen naturally because for Although years I don't want to make it sound too negative because yeah. I do believe being older has its merits yeah. as well you're definitely so more mature and yeah, more willing definitely. to like you more know yourself you're bringing which more is wisdom thing. into the relationship exactly, yeah. so for example your arguments may be minimal because you've done your growing and you know yeah. maturing so you might skip that phase for example yeah that's as true young actually people. and you know yourself so, more yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so that's actually a good thing because you know mm. like what you want from life and all these sort of things they are actually good things you have clear well. goals now. exactly yeah. um, mm. whereas when maybe when you're young you don't have that as much um so that is there's always going to be positives yes. and benefits but i would still say getting married younger is always sort of more advantageous even when it comes to like being a mother yes. being a wife you just naturally have you know that more energy that uh, in oh, your yes. body isn't it um your body can like take having children more so the like, I've got four older children. you get once you reach your once you're approaching your 40s your energy starts depleting exactly, yeah. and of course you know uh, after that it, it's just going to go downhill it's all dependent on really how well you've looked after yourself exactly. but you're no, no longer youthful it is true uh, so. I, I have four children mm. and I see the difference like when I had my first child compared yeah. to when I had my fourth child and the amount of energy I had it's like when you're young you sort of just bounce back even after yeah. having you know going through the pregnancy and the childbirth and everything you sort of bounce back more easily and yeah, as you get do. older it gets a lot sure. lot more difficult um, your body just doesn't heal as quickly either you don't have as much energy yeah. um, and it just becomes a lot more harder so, so, so I guess what you're really saying is physically it's better for women yeah um, physically to have the, yeah. even in terms of like uh, you know your adaptability yeah, when, and everything yeah. like that uh, it, it's going to be a lot more easier in life um, to, to to get married younger of course and, and in terms of when we talked about you know um, wanting to study or wanting to have a profession I don't think we need to worry about things like that because those who reference Islam in the right way, those who learn about um, you know, Islam in the correct way will know that women have um, you know, a world of rights within Islam. We just yeah. don't recognize what they are because we don't understand things from an Islamic perspective. Islam has given women rights, you know, from 1400 years ago. It's not something that we're just coming to now. Yeah. But as you say, we just need to recognize what our primary role is and um, after that everything you know as, as they say um, is it uh, what's that saying the world is your oyster right definitely yeah. mm. if we look at it we have to mm. see like what is our mindset yeah. in terms of like in life at the end of the day we know that Allah put us on this earth and we're here to worship him and mm. we're going back to him so if you look at 
if you look at it from that, you're going to be looking at how can I maximize the amount of reward that I can get. Yes. And for us, where our primary role is as a mother and a wife, then mm. that is going to be where the, the majority of the ajr lies. Mm. Even the Prophet ﷺ said that marriage is half of faith. And the scholars have said that this is in terms of the rewards mm. that you get by being married. So there's such an emphasis and such a great reward in marriage that we should seek it. Um, the problem is that when we when we view other things to sort of have more priority yeah. and sort of um, you know be better for us. So, so for example, living uh, in this society, we see that there's like an emphasis and a, a, a greater value, I would mm. say, as well, put on being a career woman. Um, yeah. So a person that. Uh, you know, earns a certain amount of money is seen as being someone that has a higher value yes. than, say, a woman that is just staying at home and being a mother. Well, it's a and material a world we're living see, in. So it, that's so the issue yeah. as well. So we we don't view it as that. Yeah. And yes, social can, media has yeah, had an effect exactly. on us. We don't view yeah. it as that. Mm. To be successful, mm. it doesn't mean you have to be earning, you know, a six-figure salary yeah. and have a nice car and a, you know, big house Going and all that sort of stuff. Holidays, success yeah. is mm. based on how does Allah see you, isn't it? At the end of the day, mm. um, you are successful if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, loves you and if you have made, you know, done your best to try and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what true success is. Mm. Um, and this is what we should be trying to achieve throughout um, our life, whether that's through marriage absolutely. or what have you. I'm so glad you talked about true success because... Because I think um, that's so true. We tend to overlook what's really important. Mm. And our life, our entire life, our existence is about worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you seek a spouse, that is one of the most important factors that you should be looking for in a woman. Um, and as we know, um, this is a common hadith that we um, tend to narrate. Um, you know, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, a woman is married for uh, four reasons her wealth, her noble ancestry, beauty and religion. Um, and he said, choose the religious woman, um, lest your hand is stuck to dust. Um, so, you know, that's just an expression to say that you'll be destitute, isn't it, that the, our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used. And this hadith is related in Al-Bukhari and Muslim also. Um, and um, j just um, for those people who don't understand, so the Arabic is, it says, Tunkahul mar'atu li arba'in li maliha, so her wealth, li hasabiha, so her uh, lineage, and wa jamaliha, her beauty, and walidiniha, that's the fourth. And, and the fourth, religion, is the most important. So I guess this is another important point because we, as you said, we live in a material world and we tend to go for beauty, don't we? Mm beauty and as you said a job a successful job maybe even a house uh, you know the latest car um, and we get attracted to these things and we you know and and so you find you rush into a relationship and you have all the material things that you need around you but you're missing that tranquility that happiness or that peace you don't find that within the marriage yeah. so um, can I get you to comment on that um, yeah, uh, I think this is something that's really important as well. Uh, sometimes we can, you know, like see marriage as what can I acquire from mm -hmm. the marriage as well. So we're looking at marriage in a materialistic way as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's not about like sort of how much like reward can I get from the marriage, how much mm -hmm. angel can I get from the rule, but actually it's what can I get materially from the, the marriage. Right, so if yeah. I marry a, a wealthy man, I can get, you know, like sort of, you know, a lot of material things. You know, he'll buy me a diamond ring or he, he'll make sure that I've got a nice big house and, you know, I'm taken care of in these mm. sort of ways. If I marry a, a good looking man, then, you know, he's going to be, you know, like handsome and good to yeah. look at. But really, what should we So you'll feel in? good. People yeah. will look at you. You'll be the center of attention. Yeah. Uh, you can post it on your whatever, you know, Instagram and... What else is the Twitter? <laughs> yeah, but Everything. are these really the yeah. things we should be seeking, isn't yeah. it, from mm. uh, from a marriage, from a relationship? Uh, it's, it's not, because the Prophet says, seek the one with yeah. Deen, mm. because this is the thing that is going to bring us success. Because this, is, when we looking, when we marry someone for the sake of the for the Deen, and we marry someone for the Islamic character, yeah. they're going to help us to become better, and we're yeah. going to help them to become better. This and really, is what this will is what help you in yeah. the long run, and um, as you say. And actually, you remind me of another hadith which addressed this, where the Prophet ﷺ said, "A man who marries a woman for the sake of her wealth, Allah leaves him in his own condition, and the one who marries her for her beauty, he will find in her things which he dislikes, i.e., displeasing matters." 
and the one who marries her for the sake of her faith, a her uh, deen, religiousness, Allah will gather up all these things for him in this yeah. person. So subhanAllah, can you see how many times the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa um, you know, what we find is he's telling us it's okay to look for all four elements, mm -hmm. but the one that you give most importance Priority. is the believing woman because, you know, she will have all the beauty that you need, um, you know, yeah. in the long run. When you are destitute, when you are going through difficult times, she will not abandon you. Yeah. She will become your support and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, it's really important mm. actually like when you're talking about in terms of like uh, look what you're looking for yeah when you look for a person that has a deen and you marry them for the character actually beautifies the person it does, as well yeah. sometimes you know people will say you know the person ain't so good looking they're not yeah, too good yeah. looking but you know they're very religious yeah and um, my advice usually would be for that person to go and actually speak to them so sometimes they would you know just look at the picture or what have you um and they'll be like they're not that you know, good looking on the image or on the picture, um, but then, you know, they, they're very sort of like Islamic or everyone mm. said that they're very practicing and things like that. I would say go and speak to the person, mm. go and find out what they like. When you spend time, you'll see a little bit of their character as well. And usually if someone has a, a beautiful character, character, it beautifies the person as well. So, you know, we shouldn't just look at somebody for marriage. This, what you for, just said about beauty, beautiful yeah, character beauty, is yeah. so important because we often hear about beautiful character around the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and mm -hmm. you know when you hear about his character and how he behaved with people, how he seated, mm -hmm. um, you know, how he sat with people, how, you know, his conduct in every manner, you find it so beautiful, you can, you know, it, it just... Um, draws love and respect from you when you hear of these yeah. and similarly you find you know this at uh, the Dean puts so much importance on manners doesn't it yeah. and where does manners come from we see all the manners are in in our examples of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I've got to say I'm so glad you joined us today we've had you know such um, great conversation unfortunately we have run out of time so Jazakallah Khairan for joining us today I just like to end on this note to say there is, the Prophet Sallallahu said, there is nothing like marriage for two who love one another. Lam, um, he said, Lam nara lil mutahabbaini misla nikah. So um, we do wish all our viewers luck in finding a spouse. Keep us in your du'as and do join us again on Masailun Nisa next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.